Hello, I'm Tommy Moore from the Bartista Lab. In this video, we're going to look at a lesser known Fairburn palm strike. And in essence, this is a shortened palm hook. And you see it in much of his video content once he makes his way to the opposite side of the Atlantic Ocean. And in essence, it works like this. When the opponent is very close, or perhaps the chin jab is not the most appropriate tool, the base of the palm is used in a circular motion, hitting with the base of the palm, but the arm is moving in a pretty similar trajectory to a hook. Same body mechanic, the fingers are facing towards you, the palm is out towards the opponent, wham, and you're hitting this way around. So you're essentially firing a palm hook into the opponent. This is quite good if you end up in what's known as a fucked up tangle, so you end up in this nasty, horrible mauling, grappling, biting, gouging phase and you want to get out of it and you want to use something percussive, sometimes given the position of the hand the chin jab might be untenable, gouging might be difficult to achieve, so what can I do percussively? Well, one of the things I can do percussively is slam in this palm hook, this particular style. So whether I've got an attachment and I can do this or I'm just pre-attachment Either way, jamming this palm hook in, you can get some decent body power behind it if you use the same mechanic as a hook. Shoulder, hips, feet, all turning with it, all turning with it, turning and opening up that body. Even if you're very close, <coughs> even if you're very close, <coughs> you can get some decent torque off this particular palm hook. So it's got a useful tool, but the range really is hyper close range. Nasty, shitty grapple. <coughs> And then you move on to something else. This might give you the space for this. This might give you the space for this. Might give you the space for any number of things. But this inverted, make sure you turn your hip, your shoulder, bang, bang. Same biomechanically, bang, 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 bang. So it's got nice close-up benefits. You can treat this as a bit of a wheeling blow. So if we end up in this fucked up tangle and I want to disengage, I may hit this, but complete my journey this way. So treat it as if I'm going fully through the opponent. You get the ancillary benefit of often the forearm or the elbow will drag across the face. So we end up in this fucked up tangle. Over there is the kitchen with the kitchen knives. Over there is the trench with the spade in it. Over there is the place where the mobile phone is. Over there is the place where the torch is. Any number of variables. Over there is the place where my buddies are asleep. In this fucked up tangle, you smash this across, but as a wheeling blow. So as a, a turning blow that's got full cut through that you see people like Styers talk about later. Fucked up tangle, palm hook, but we'll wheel it through. As you wheel through the opponent. You could do it just to add extra force. From here, so you've got a bit of extra space to fire something off. So if you're in the fucked up tangle, you can use the wheeling blow to give a bit of room to cock you essentially for something else. That's one option. Or you can use the wheeling blow to start to escape or find yourself in a better geography or find yourself a better tool to defend yourself. But either way, often from when you're very close, it can be done as a wheeling blow. Smash straight through them as you move elsewhere. Bang, bang. Another benefit is that you can use this to rip out. What I mean by that, if I do a tiger claw from the front, I can smash, when I withdraw, I can rake the eyes as I withdraw. Pretty simple. If I go here, I can use this. I can grab a lump of face, eyes, nose, under the chin. You can grab a decent lump of face, and rip it across and that could just be a ballistic gouge just to hurt and damage the eyes or it could genuinely be to turn the face expose the longer part of the jaw whoop, to something nastier so hopefully that makes sense you're in this fucked up tangle you can smash in with this particular palm hook inwards bang you can wheel and escape you can wheel and make space for something else or, 
can palm hook through, grab a lump of face, and either rip that off, <coughs> so you're causing trauma as you drag across the eye, or you can keep hold of a lump of face, <coughs> turning that jaw, and then striking on it. I'm slowing this down because the frame rate of the camera is terrible. So if I move fast, it's just going to look like a mad, blurry mess. <coughs> okay. Nice and simple. You can also use this palm hook. So just as I was grabbing the face, you can also grab a garment. So <coughs> I've now used that reaching grab from the palm hook. I've grabbed the garment, and in this instance, I might drive his head back into a wall. I might draw one of his weapons, one of my weapons. I may just decide to rag him down into a takedown. Or I can extend him somewhat and then hit. So that striking through, that wheeling motion, <coughs> could be to grab the clothes, following which you can extend, hit, do other stuff, do other stuff. But there's lots and lots of variances you can play with. It's a very useful and ubiquitous tool. The inverted palm hook. As a simple strike, <coughs> as a strike which wheels out, <coughs> as a strike which wheels to make space, <coughs> as a strike which allows you to grab a lump of face, <coughs> as a strike which allows you to do the aforementioned, so give you room to strike, <coughs> or a strike which leads to a clothing grab, which leads to a ram, a weapon withdrawal, an extension, a hit, anything else. But these nice, <coughs> close up, <coughs> fucked up tangle, <coughs> <coughs> star palm hooks can cause some serious damage up close. Also when you're mounting an opponent, very possible to do. When you're being mounted, possible to do. When they're sideways on against the wall, imagine the wall is here. There's lots of opportunities to use this inverted palm hook. A nice, simple, easy to retain, low risk tool. And for me, my favorite use is the hit, to the face rip, to something bigger. Because while this is percussive, it might not be concussive. So percussive, disrupt his balance, then go concussive. That's a little primer on using the inverted palm hook. It's never really officially named. It's not really given any particular parlance. We do see it in films of Fairburn. Makes logical sense, so give it a play. It's a useful tool, a close range tool, and often fills the gap between too close for a palm heel, a chin jab, uh, you don't want to apply the gouge. You might be worried about being gouged back yourself. It's percussive leading to concussive. But the palm hook, brilliant, brilliant tool. So get yourself whatever you want to practice with. If you're at home and you don't have a bag or a bob, get yourself a focus mitt, nice and simple. Get yourself very close. Make the opponent taller than you. Imagine the opponent's just taken one knee, you've just hit him in the groin. There are any number of ways to do this. Even if you don't have one of these, grab a pillow. You always can find opportunities to make or use gear. You know, so if you've got a pillow at home, you can do this. If you've got a mitt, you can do this. If you've got a bob or a bag, you can do this. Fingers towards you, hip, shoulder, feet. Very close, low down, higher than you often used in compounds, so multiples, unless you're practicing ripping, grabbing, tearing, manipulating clothes. But, palm hook, something cool to play with of World War II vintage that you might not have done before.